I guess what made me want to be a coach was, you know, just like the, you know, the enjoyment I had out of running myself when I was in high school and college, and just the practical necessity of getting a job out of college. And I wanted to continue running to some extent myself. And back then, the best option was, you know, to teach. And along with that, usually, you know, came a coaching job. So um, that's how I first got into it. But I never realized the impact that it would have on me, you know, like just how much you really get involved when you, once you get into it. Just by accident, I ran into a Haverford alum, a guy called Chuck Durani, Durani he was a great guy, he's a lawyer in Wilmington. He had graduated from Haverford a few years before that and was finishing up Villanova Law School. And Chuck said, um, you know, that uh, Dixie Dunbar, who was like the, you know, a 10 year coach and an awesome, great, great guy. Dixie had gotten to the point where his, his other duties at Haverford were just overwhelming him and he realized that he just couldn't continue coaching. So it was a part-time job and after two years, then they created a position where um, it did become full-time. The kids, you know, the kids and the faculty, you know, like that's the two things that have never changed in all the, all the years that I've been here, like, like the quality of, the, of the, the students and the quality of the faculty. And, you know, you know hopefully we'll, we'll never lose that. But it's, it's really different, you know, like the, um, you know, just because after all these years, you, you know, you get an idea of what's going on at other schools, even supposedly somewhat similar schools. But we're really different. The kids are really genuine. They're really ethical. Um, they want to learn. The kids really genuinely want to learn in a lot of different areas. So, um, so that really attracted me. And, and that's how I see this sport as part of that learning process, you know, like learning about yourself, learning how to handle success, failure, learning how to deal with other people. Um, and, you know, I think it's part of the educational process. Like, I think the team culture is a thing where the kids are really, really tight. They really support each other. They work with each other, not against each other, because that's, that working against each other is something that I've seen with a lot of so-called successful programs, like, like bottom line success, you know, where the top guys kind of use like the lesser guys to further their goals and training and the meets and stuff like that. Whereas here, like, the better guys reach back to the slower kids and bring, try to bring them up to their level. And the slower kids contribute just as much, you know, just by working just as hard as the faster kids. And through that example, inspiring, you know, the better guys in the team and certainly inspiring me as a coach, you know, like I, I'm just blown away by like how into it these guys are. I had a coach that I have the greatest respect for. He's one of the best coaches in America um, who, a couple times in the last few years, you know, he coaches at a major Division One program, um, has, you know, and he's coached Olympians and stuff like that. And he said, "I really wish that our guys were as tough as your guys," you know, which is a great compliment to these kids, you know. I don't know if you know what talent there is in coaching, but like I work really hard, you know, and um, and I'm not afraid to make mistakes because it, it just, you know, mistakes as, you know, as far as training and, and stuff like that, you know, like the same workouts are not always going to be the best thing for every single athlete. So you try and learn over time and sometimes it's a hit or miss thing and, and, and um, but, you know, usually you can correct those mistakes. But, you know, I think if anything, like the, if there's one quality that, you know, helps these kids is I think I give them hope, you know, because I really believe in them. And, um, and I, you know, I'm not a great believer in so-called natural talent. I think you, it's a division three runner. You can do a heck of a lot with, um, you know, just by doing all the other stuff right, you can actually um, improve quite a bit and, and, you know, end up coming real close to your goals.
three things. I tell this almost every kid that comes in, like, you know, because they, they always ask, what are you looking for? And obviously <clears throat> what they mean is, you know, what, you know what, what kind of times or what kind of distances in the shot or long jump or whatever, you know, like what kind of performances are you looking for? And I really don't care about that. You know, like what I look for is a nice kid who really loves the sport and wants to be part of a really close knit team. And if you have a kid that does that, even if he's like the absolute slowest kid of the team or has like no jumping ability at all, but he's a triple jumper, you know, a kid like that with all those up, those three qualities is going to contribute a huge amount to the team, make himself better to start with, but he's going to make his teammates better too, you know, and, um, and you know, just have a better team. So that's the three things I look for. And if a kid's fast, you know, that's a bonus, you know, that's great. You know, like we're not going to throw him away, but, um, but that's what I look for anyway. I guess, you know, the, th the thing about the team, you know, is, is just, again, the quality of the kids. Like, you know, because I've I, I had, I don't know, a bunch of chances, like two chances, for example, to coach at the college that I went to, Villanova, in, you know, in the past. And, um, you know, I didn't do it, you know, largely because my own two kids were young at, at the time and, and I didn't think it was fair to them, even though I wouldn't have to move or anything like that just taking a different job with all the implications of that. Uh, but close behind that, the reason I didn't do it was you're never gonna find kids like you find at Haverford, you know, you're just not. Even having scholarships that you can give out to your best runners at, at a place like Villanova, you're just not gonna get the quality of person that, that we get on our team. So, um, you know, so I'm really, really fortunate just to, to have what we have here and, and to be associated with that. Just you know, just send me an email or call. Like, you know, both those things are on the on the the, the athletic website. Um, you know, just contact me somehow, or even stop by if they're a local kid. And then um, and then I think the biggest thing is try to set up. You know, an interview. You know, try and stop by and and talk to me, see the school. You know, uh, go on a tour and, and stuff like that. And then beyond that, if it's one of their top choices, then I really think they should should spend some time, 24 hours on campus, seeing classes, not, not on a weekend, you know, when there's no classes going on, but, but seeing classes, talking to kids on the team, talking to kids off the team, you know, just seeing what the feel of the school is like, you know, it doesn't mean it's better or worse, you know, it's just different. So, so kids have to see what works for them, but I think spending 24 hours on a campus will show them that. Yeah, you know, probably teaching though, I, I would think, you know, because, um, you know, again, I think teaching is very comparable to, to what you're trying to do as a coach. I mean, that's what you are doing. You're, you're trying to teach people about themselves, you know. Probably the things I'm most in, interested in would be, um, you know, simply like reading, you know, um, a lot of, you know, history, biography, um, you know, uh, you know, music, you know, mainly classical music, but and, and jazz too, classical music and jazz. And I've gotten more into like chamber music, like the last couple of years and opera, which I never, you know, really had that much knowledge of or interest in until relatively recently. Yeah, you know? so, so that's kind of cool. And then films also, like that Bryn Mawr Film Institute is like a great resource in the area. So that's like really been good, you know, going to a lot of stuff there. Willie Mays, you know, greatest, greatest baseball player of all time, you know. But, but really, like, the, the two big heroes, like, two, two sides of my, well, you know, of my family. My father, you know, who was a roofer, just like a great, great, you know, example, great worker. And my youngest brother, Mike, you know, who does the exact same thing. He runs the, the roofing company and, and, and just, you know, the dedication and, you know, what, what they put into their jobs is, is, is just amazing. Wouldn't, call it an achievement would not be the accurate thing, but, but just, um, just my relationship with my two kids, you know, my, my two sons, you know, like, um, you know, I'm not like a big believer that, you know, I don't know really how much influence you know, I've had on their development and stuff. I, you know, hopefully I had some, something to do with it. But they're like the, you know, like 
I'm just amazed by you know just you know who they are and what they do and stuff like that. You know, so I guess I would say that, but it's it's not my achievement; it's, it's their achievement.